before following any of these instructions, please make sure you have the latest version of ZBrush installed on your system. When installing GoZ for Moto 401, you'll first need to navigate to the following folder. Click on your hard drive, then Users, then the Shared folder, Pixelogic, GoZBrush, UI, the Moto folder, and then finally Moto 401. Inside this folder you'll notice a file called gozio.lx. You'll want to right click on this file and copy it. Next, we'll right click on the Moto 401 application icon and click Show Package Contents. Then open up the folder called Contents and then one more folder called Extras. This is where we'll paste the file that we just copied. At this point you want to be sure to close down this Extras folder. Next we'll be navigating to the following directory. Again click on your hard drive, click on Users, this time we'll click on the Home directory, then the Libraries folder, Application Support, then look for the Luxology folder. Inside there, you should have a folder called Configs. If you don't have this folder located here, create it now. Now that you have the Configs folder open, we'll navigate back to the Moto 401 folder that we opened earlier. Inside that folder, you'll see a file called GoZCat 401 config. Copy this file and then paste it in the Configs folder. Now we'll be pasting two more files into this configs folder, so keep it open. We'll navigate back slightly into the Moto folder and copy the GoZ key shortcut config file. And then we'll paste that again in the config folder. The last file we'll need in the configs folder is the gozi.png. So we'll right click, copy that, and then again move over to the configs folder right click and paste. Now that the appropriate files have been placed in the correct folders, you can launch ZBrush. For this next part, we'll be working with the model that you downloaded with this video. So click Load Tool and then click and select the gozetestzsphere.ztl. You'll notice that this model already has some sculpting information with subdivision levels and some poly paint information. I'll just switch the material so we can see that polypaint information a bit better. For creating a texture, normal, or displacement map, of course we'll need some UVs. This model already has some UVs set up, so we won't worry about that now. In the texture map pull-down, we can click New from Polypaint to convert the polypaint information over to a texture map. Next we'll be setting up our displacement map, so I'll click on the displacement map pull-down here in the tool palette. And the only option I'm going to worry about for this example is that smooth UVs is checked. We then need to lower the resolution of our model to the lowest subdivision level by hitting Shift D. And once we reach the lowest subdivision level, we can click Create Displacement Map. Creating a normal map for this model is just as straightforward. I'll click on the Normal Map pull-down, and in this case I'll make sure that Tangent and Smooth UVs is checked. Then all I need to do is click Create Normal Map. In this example, I took the time to create both a normal map and a displacement map, but both aren't needed to transfer high-resolution data to other programs. You can create whichever one suits your needs best. Now with all of our maps created, all we need to do is click the GoZ button located here in the tool palette. You'll then be presented with a list of GoZ-enabled applications installed on your system. In this case, we'll click Moto, which will automatically launch the application, send our geometry, and all of the maps we created over. Now inside Moto we can see that our texture map, our normal map, and even our displacement map have all been applied to our object. We can see the displacement by doing a render. Now that you've set up your GoZ pipeline between ZBrush and Moto correctly, at any time you can select an object here inside Moto and send it back to ZBrush by hitting the keyboard shortcut Control shift g